Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackHere.com, and today we're going to review and show you how to install the all-new Cena Smart HJC 10B Bluetooth device. The Cena Smart HJC. 10B Bluetooth unit sells for $139.99. This is a really affordable quality unit. It is designed to integrate directly with select HJC helmets, one of which is to my left. This is the one we're going to be installing it in in this video. I've already done it. I've already used the unit, so I have a good idea of how it installs and how it works, and I can help you get a really good, clean result. This is the all-new i10. This is their 134 to 152 Snell certified full face helmet. You add this $139 Bluetooth device, Cena Bluetooth device to that, you're sub 300 and you've got yourself a kick ass combo. You can be out there listening to your jams, taking phone calls if you need to, if you have to, place phone calls. It does some pairing, some different shit with other devices that are out there. I'm not going to dive into that. When it comes to the nerd specs, I'm going to encourage you to take your time and look at both. Look at the the 10B, look at the 20B, and you decide which one's right for you. I can tell you the other one is $299, so it's significantly more. To me, this one makes a tremendous amount of sense with this helmet. It really performed nicely. The other HJC helmets this integrates directly with will include the all-new ARFA 11 Pro Carbon Helmet that is on the way. The all-new ARFA 70ST Carbon also on the way. The ARFA 90S modular helmets will accept this. Those are on the way as well. Models that are currently here are going to be the i10, the F70 full face, and then the i90 modular. We will at some point here in the next week or so do an install on that i90 modular as well to help you get a good result. We will be doing the install of the 10B on the i10. We're going to have another video where I install and review the 20B, we're gonna do that in the F70 helmet. Okay, Shoei came out with units like this, Cena units for a couple of their models too, the Neotech 2 and the GT Air 2. I did install videos on those, was able to get a good end result. I honestly think that this one turns out just a little bit better when installed in this helmet. Give you a quick unboxing here. Nice job with the packaging. Obviously, Cena is a quality company. They know what they're doing. This isn't the first Bluetooth device they've sold. Underneath here, you're going to find, we're going to talk more about this, the instructions, your button mic, USB cable, Allen wrench, two longer screws for the access plate, and then you have some assorted Velcro patches, and if you're going to be using the boom mic, which you would only do on the modular helmet, you got a couple of covers for that. You got a couple of little speaker covers here. We'll show that here in a second. Get that stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and remove the unit from the packaging. For the full face installs, you're going to use this button mic. And in the video, when we reviewed this helmet as well as the F70, you know, we showed all the channels that HJC has molded to the inside of this helmet to accept the speakers, to accept the microphone, and all the assorted wiring. I mean, it's really a slick little deal here. The one that most excites me is going to be this i10. I mean, like, you're, you're under 300 bucks, and you've got yourself a nice helmet, a nice communicator, All right, I've already charged this, all right? I just plugged it in to my computer and let both the units kind of sit overnight and fully charge. The instruction packet, it's multiple language stuff. <clears throat> I'm guessing you're gonna be using English like I did. I'm just gonna jump right to it here. The instructions, they leave a lot to be desired. You know, there's really not a lot of words here. It's got these little pictures. All right, go ahead and zoom in on that. I don't wanna beat these guys up uh, in, in terms of the instructions, but you know, I'll tell you right now that 
You know, what they showed here didn't make pairing the device very easy, okay? I'm gonna run you through that in this video and Caleb's gonna put a nice link so you can go right to the pairing part. Save yourself a little aggrav ag aggravation. And then here are your install instructions. That's, that's not great, not in my opinion. Cena makes great stuff. I love HJC, they make great stuff too. They don't make great instructions though. Sorry about that, Rick, I just had to say that, dude. So now, to install the unit, the first thing I like to do, anytime I'm gonna work on a helmet, you wanna get your shield off of it. You don't wanna get your shield all scratched up. So on the I-10, like we showed you in the review video, just pull back on the trigger, shield's gonna come right off. Got my phone here so we can show you how to pair it. I've got a little service ring here to hold the helmet. If you don't have anything like that at home, just put a towel on the countertop so that you're not scratching the helmet. Remove the cheek pads. You need to wedge your finger in between the back of the cheek pad and the EPS or the inner of the helmet. There are three snaps on each side. Put a little pressure in there. It's gonna release the snaps. Now grab the cheek pad here in the front. Give it kind of a tug out and up and then forward like so. Repeat the process on the other cheek pad. Did I say under $300 and you're out there listening to your jams, ready to take phone calls while you're riding your bike? You're also able to connect bike to bike. You know, this, this one, this particular unit will actually pair with some other universal communicators out there. I don't know about you guys, I don't want to talk to anybody when I'm riding. I want to listen to my music, I want to ride my bike. I actually have a communicator in my snowmobile helmet, and my wife talked to me so much, I took my microphone out, and I took her microphone out, and all we do is listen to the music when we're on the trails, and it is super awesome. Inside the helmet here, you can see where they molded in the channels to accept the microphone, the wiring, the speaker, can you get that, Caleb? So, super awesome. The real trick here is showing you where to tuck all the wires in, okay? A little bit of patience, you're gonna get a great end result. Use the Allen wrench they've supplied and remove the two fasteners here at the back of the helmet. Save the plate and the original screws, just in case you need to remove the unit. Once you have the two fasteners out, grab onto the plate like so, kind of pull up and forward, out it comes. Now, take the unit and slide it right into that pocket. Kind of run the wires into the inner portion of the helmet. Hold it down. If you look through there, you'll actually be able to see the threaded inserts. Let's get both of the fasteners started. This is not a situation where you need to apply a lot of torque, so you're going to run these down by hand. Once they're seated, maybe throw like a quarter turn at it, just very little torque. What you don't want to do is be pulling the inserts out of the helmet itself. Like so. Now the main unit itself is installed. Grab whichever microphone you're going to be using. In the case with a full face helmet, you're going to be using the button mic. Line it up like this. Push until you hear a positive click, letting you know that that is fully engaged. <clears throat> now we need to run the wiring up the right side of the helmet. You've got your microphone. 
as well as the speaker here. We're going to do the best we can to show you this. What I like to do is take the microphone. It comes with a little Velcro patch. It's in this bag. Okay, I've already installed it in the helmet one time. The patch isn't going to pull off. The adhesive would fail then. You install that little patch right here, dead center, where the button mic goes. So I already have that in place. That's a step that you're going to need to perform on your install. So let's go ahead and get that button mic. Velcroed in place from there. Just kind of tuck the wires in. You should be able to use your fingernail. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. There are, are little clips that are kind of molded into that channel that help secure it into position. And that channel runs all the way back and through the pocket where the speaker itself will eventually install. What I found works best is actually running the microphone wire through the speaker pocket at the bottom before installing the actual speaker. The speaker itself, you'll find two tabs. One here that goes on the bottom, this one on the top. You want to make sure that the, the black portion you see here is facing out towards your ear. Go ahead and dip that in. Push down, you'll feel just a little click letting you know that it's engaged. You want to start with the bottom tab engaged with the slot. Make sure that the microphone wire is all the way at the bottom and then put a little pressure here on top of the speaker until it clips into the, uh, the, the tab clips into the hole at the very top there. Now you want to take and put the speaker wire on top of the microphone wire in the little channel here just behind the speaker. All the wiring you see from here back will be completely covered and concealed once you've reinstalled your cheek pad, so bear that in mind. There's really no reason to spend a tremendous amount of time with that. Just get it in the channel. And let the cheek pad do the rest. Now grab your cheek pad. You want to make sure that the wiring, okay, back in this area is still loose. Kind of hold it out of the way. You want to slide this tab in between the outer shell of the helmet and the EPS in the rear. Put a little downward pressure. And I like to make sure too, like that little red plug here for the microphone, make sure that that's kind of leaning towards the inside of the helmet. You don't want that to get caught by this plastic tab and be pushed way down. It's not necessary. You don't want to do anything to damage the wires. So go ahead and slide that into position. You can see the white clip that is between the EPS and the outer shell of the helmet that is meant to engage with the plastic tab on the cheek pad. Get those lined up, put a little downward pressure, get that to engage, and then we'll focus on the one up front, push that in like so. Now the wires back here for the microphone and the speaker, you've got plenty of access still to get in here and tuck those in. There is a little channel, this is going to be really tough to show, there's a little ch channel right here between the back of the EPS for the cheek pad and the start of the EPS at the back of the helmet. There's a nice close-up look of how I have the wires routed, okay? Now we're ready to reinstall our cheek pad. I'm going to take just one last opportunity here to make sure the wires here at the back are tucked as far back as possible. 
Go ahead and grab your chin strap, feed it through the hole in your cheek pad. Now you're ready to snap that back in place. All you're going to do here is re-engage the three snaps. You'll note that in this package, there are covers for the boom mic if, you, if you're using it on a modular, as well as foam pieces that would install and essentially stick right to the outer portion of the speaker itself. I, with the installs I've done on the two helmets so far, the F70 and the I-10, I really didn't find a need to install these, right? The cheek pad, right? Uh, you want to kind of maintain that pocket back there. If you feel like you've got a void in that area and you want to try and put those in, that's super easy to do. All I have to do is loosen up the snaps on the cheek pad. For me, I don't know that those were really going to be necessary, okay? Now we're ready to install the left side which consists of the speaker and the keypad itself. This is slightly more complicated than the side with the microphone and the speaker. Okay, on the I-10 itself, what I noticed during the install was right in this area here, there is a little arrow. Can you see that, Caleb? I believe the purpose for that is to say, hey, put the keypad right here. The keypad has two rubber pads on the back that are pretty grippy. They're going to protect the helmet from being scratched. And they're also going to help hold this thing in place. And then it has just a plastic clip, and it's really springy. Okay, You need to slide this clip in between the outer shell and the inner EPS and locate it right in the area here with the arrow. Kind of support the helmet against your body like so. And you want to put little outer pressure here on the unit and get this clip to slide in. You need to apply pressure and be gentle all at the same time. Okay, Use a little bit of a rocking motion here. It's going to allow you to get that into position like so. And I would say right there is pretty good. Maybe a, just a little bit forward. Like that works right there. Now we need to get the wiring slid down in between the shell and the inner EPS of the helmet. This right here is essentially going to serve as kind of a loop, okay? This portion of the wiring harness is going to be on the outside of this big plastic tab, okay, that slides in the channel between the inner EPS and the outer shell. The rest of the wiring from here over is going to be inboard of that plastic tab. So let's kind of push this down in this area right here. And note how close I am right now to the actual keypad itself. Because the whole idea is, is to have enough of a loop there that's going to allow this to slide in when we reinstall our cheek pad. So right there is good. Don't really have any concern for this. We're going to be able to tidy that up after the cheek pad has been installed. From here, grab your speaker. As I showed you on the other side, find the tab that goes on the bottom. Get it in its respective slot. Put a little pressure. You hear an audible click, letting you know that the speaker is now engaged in that pocket. From here, let's go ahead and grab our cheek pad and get this reinstalled in the helmet. Same process that we did on the other side. This one is definitely going to be a little bit more challenging than what we showed you on the other side because you have to manage that wire that is now pushed down in between the uh, inner EPS and the outer shell of the helmet. And that's right where this this tab wants to go. That's the channel where this cheek pad would normally install in. Once you get the back clip in, kind of work your way to the front.
this is a back to front operation, you know, and you want to, you need to make sure that this is slid far enough back that you're able to get the forwardmost clip locked in like so. Now we're able to go back and tidy up all the wiring, okay? Start off with our speaker wire. Just kind of tuck that down in there. I apologize, I know the access here is not great. There's just not a lot of room to do the job and give you a really clear view of exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing now is I'm just tucking that thicker harness in between the cheek pad and the inner EPS of that helmet shell. And then we've got the speaker wire. Do the same with that. Like so, and you can see that's pretty clean. From here, simple cheek pad reinstall. Let's go ahead and feed that strap through the hole. Re-engage the three snaps. Like so. One last opportunity here to make sure everything's tucked in. And you can see that is really tidy. That thing is tucked away in there. Looks sleek on the outside of the helmet. Charging or firmware updates. You're gonna use the USB cable they've supplied. The access is found right here, inboard on the unit. Your seal is there, grab your cable. Plugs in like so. It looks like it's a little tight, but it's not restrictive at all. It's very easy to get the cable plugged in there. They have a smartphone app. They have a website that you're able to go to as well for the firmware updates. The address is outlined here in the instructions. You can find that and go to it. I did a firmware update on this one. You didn't really have to to get it operational, but I did it just to go through the process. It's super simple. If you have even basic computer skills, find the address in here, enter it into your browser, get rolling, super simple. And realistically, most people will never have to update the firmware. That's how a lot of these devices are. They do have constant firmware updates like the Cardos that I have, the Scala Riders and my snow helmets. Yeah, I've done this many firmware updates. You know, just install them, get them dialed in with your phone, and then use them. I would expect this will be the same thing. Put your helmet shield back on. Always before you ride, make sure you cycle that a couple of times to ensure that you have it locked into position. You don't get out on your ride and have the shield pop off the helmet. When I come back, we're going to show you how to get this thing paired with your phone. That was something that using the instructions they had here, I'm not going to lie to you, I found it a little bit frustrating. I played with it for a second, and then it was very apparent that the right way to pair this up was to be wearing the helmet so that you could hear the props through the speakers while you're trying to get it paired. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to pair this with your smartphone. I have an iPhone 10. okay, so that's what we're going to be using. When to the settings menu, I'm into Bluetooth now. I find it is easiest to perform this task when you're wearing this helmet so you can hear the voice prompts inside. You need to begin by powering the unit up. That's going to be the forwardmost button or the plus and the center button. A short press and hold. You'll hear a couple beeps. Hello. Hello. 
Now you need to press and hold the center button, okay? It is going to cycle through some messages. You're first going to hear intercom pairing. Continue to hold. Then you're going to hear universal intercom pairing. Continue to hold. And then you're going to hear configuration menu. When you hear configuration menu, you will then let go of the center button and press the forwardmost or the plus button with a quick tap. Intercom pairing. Universal intercom pairing. Configuration menu. There it is, Smart HJC 10B. Your headset has paired. And we are now connected. You get a message that says your headset is paired, and we are ready. Break this thing in right, maybe a little tool. Sounds fantastic, volume control. Lower is the rearward most button. All this is just a tap. Raise the volume up here. Power the unit down, center button, forward most button, press and hold. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so let's bring this one home. $139 for this. I listened to it quite a bit, made calls on it. It sounds really good. My expectations are on the road is going to be a similar experience, right? Cena didn't start doing this stuff yesterday. They've been making quality Bluetooth devices for a long time. The direct integration to this helmet is super, super slick. I think we've shown you that. You know, it doesn't look like you have a universal unit. It looks like you've got yourself a nice direct fit unit. And together, I think the i10 and the Cena Smart HJC 10B make one hell of a combination. I feel that this unit is right for riders that are looking to do basic things with it and have realistic expectations. I think this sounds good. Does the other unit sound better? Yeah, it sounded like a little bit better, not tremendously better. You have to read the spec sheet and see if those other features are important to you or not. For me, all I want to do is I want to listen to my music, and if, God forbid, somebody actually needs to get a hold of me while I'm riding my motorcycle, have the ability to take an incoming call or, if necessary, place an outgoing call. It does all those things, and it does it for $139. I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. This is the all-new Cena Smart HJC 10B Bluetooth device.